Hey guys, so back on the land, uh, been in Gozo for the last couple of months and it's February and all my oak trees are dormant and as you can hear in the background um, we've got a team of people with a load of chainsaws to prune and do a load of forestry management. It's uh, Chema, Arantia's brother, has really come through again. He knows some friends from Spain, Sona and Juan, and they have offered like three days of their time and they are forestry managers in Spain working for the fire service and they focus really on pruning trees to protect them from fires and removing disease. We got here, we started work straight away, so we're two days in. This is the last day that they're going to be here, and we've done lots of work. The, the forest has actually moved. we've got a load of dead eucalyptus trees above our caravan and they're starting to look a bit precarious so we're going to remove all the dead trees and yeah it's going to be fun because if the trees go the wrong way then maybe it lands on the caravan so we're hoping that ain't going to happen but uh, we will see how the day the next hour goes So we're at uh, Zafia's land. What's the name of the land, Zafia? So we're calling it the Libellini Venture. The Bellini Venture. Which means uh, the Dragonfly Venture. The Dragonfly Venture. Yeah. Nice. Because always in the way, which is okay. <laughs> so yeah, and um, there's a lot of work to do, mm. but it's a beautiful place. And um, I want to invite Zafia to tell us a bit what we're doing here and what the project is about and I'll leave it to Zavia. <laughs> I came into a little bit of money a couple of years ago after selling my business and I really sort of wanted to like what could I do? I could travel around the world yeah. and enjoy myself or actually do something useful. Yeah. Yeah.
so I've bought just over 10 hectares of forest in um, Lira, which is central north Portugal. And yeah, I've bought uh, in a basically in a valley with the aim of putting a proper forestry management plan back in place. Yeah. now two years. The first year I did nothing on the land. I didn't, I let, I actually had an agreement with the original owners that they continued managing the land. Um, they were a beautiful family, they had their vegetable beds and they, they continued managing the land because yes. all I wanted to do was observe. Yeah. Observe the sun, observe the wind, yeah. um, think about how we interact with the land because this is the thing, Nature knows what it's doing, yeah. <laughs> but oh, our yes. our yeah. interaction yeah, between living in nature in harmony and not destroying the resources yeah. that we have. Yeah. Well, we're in the heart of the land at the moment, uh, which is next to the river, yeah. and. Where primary is oaks, willows, um, that's sort of the main but in the, in the general heart. area. But then, a lot of eucalyptus, yeah? Yeah, so that, that covers about a hectare, yeah. the heart, and the rest of it is eucalyptus. Um, and, you know, I didn't need to buy 10 hectares, you know, that's a huge, <laughs> that's a huge land. It's, it's, you know, it, it takes me half an hour to walk from one side of my land to the other. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's, it's a big piece of land. So, why did, we, why did I buy 10 hectares? So, the long and the short is very simply so we can put a proper fire ring around the outside. So... What we, do you mean by fire ring? Where we cut all the trees down. Yes we don't plant new trees and we actually keep the the exterior of the property pretty clear and devoid of vegetation so you create a kind of threshold you create a threshold also when we start doing the terracing on the land and the planting of the new trees and the um, fire resistant trees then we can actually use a proper planting pattern. So the trees are four or five meters apart, for example. Yeah. Yeah. So nothing, we can still keep the same number of trees that we were planning on planting, but we just utilize more space. So a big part of the overall fire man management plan that we're looking to put over the land is also water catchment and water storage. We're, what the plan is, is I've got one, two, three, four high points on my land. And on top of those high points, we're gonna put reservoirs and we're gonna do natural pools and lots of different types of water storage. And these will be fed from the river. We'll put um, ram pumps, which run 24 yeah. hours a day, and they will they constantly pump up. pump up. And then we're going to terrace the land and we're going to put in swales. Okay. Now, swales are basically ditches that are filled with organic material. And this absorbs water. So all of these things will mean that we're actually allowing the water to catch the organic material absorbs more water yeah. and therefore we increase the amount of water in the, in the, soil. In the soil and, and in, the in the land. This in itself it's a kind of a fire breaker as well. No? In itself that's it, it's a fire prevention because if you've got wet soil, green organic matter again and no fuel, and no fuel it's you, like that's it. Pretty much in contact. Even, even, even if there is a fire it's easier to control now. Exactly. 
Very simple. <laughs> if you don't, if you don't, if you don't give a fire fuel, <laughs> it's not going to work. So yeah, just to have an idea, six months ago, this is what the area we were working on looked like. You see all the brambles, everything, fallen trees, dead trees, just everything, 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 everything. Huge fire hazard. You know, a fire goes through there, it's going to light everything. So, and then if you look at what we've done, yeah, you can see that terrace is now cleaned, the trees are looking healthy. And we have much a big, more space, much, more space. much more space, and we have a big supply of firewood, we have a big supply of building materials, and yeah. Today we're back to clearing. Um, we have all of this section to start collecting all the wood from the guys who pruned it. You can see it's still a lot of work, but uh, no, we made really good progress yesterday. Hopefully we're going to finish this section. So what we have to do is we need to basically come in and start cutting the woods into manageable lengths and all the pieces that we can keep that we'll either use for firewood at a later stage, building materials, uh, we will store and the rest of it I'm afraid we're going to have to burn because yeah we still haven't got our shredder but uh, no it's going to be another good day where nine days into the mission of pruning and clearing this section my back is killing i think everyone is really tired but uh yeah we're still full of energy and we're gonna make it happen going to walk around in a river, I would recommend to use waders, not just... Oh, oh no! <laughs> oh no! We've got a lot of wood that we need to burn. I tried to find a shredder. I could not find a shredder, so we're burning. Um, so this fire we have here has been burning for two days of oaks and mixed woods and lots of goodness. So instead of just leaving it burning, what we're gonna do is a very basic method of producing biochar. That'll be like the best fertilizer that we can put on our trees and soil the fire out using water to produce the charcoal. So as you can see this has produced really nice charcoal, lots of branches, lots of goodness, 
and over time this will break down into dust and create really good biochar. This is the charcoal we made in the last few days. We're just mixing a little bit with our compost to go into our tomato vegetable base. So we're getting all of these really nice volunteers coming. Not only are we doing the day-to-day -day stuff, managing the gardens, Katarina's up there now reading one of the vegetable yeah. beds, <laughs> um, looking after the chickens, doing these sort of things, but then we have the projects. Yeah. And what we do is we work on a flow. Usually in the mornings we work on the projects because it's cool, yeah. we're fresh, have a lot of we energy. have lots of energy and then we work on the projects. Then we have a nice lunch and in the afternoon we focus a little bit more on the day-to-day -day management of the actual space because the ultimate aim, what I would like to have with this space, is to be able to create a space that can be completely off-grid yeah. while self-sustainable. We can, we're going to plant an agro-food forest, we're going to do big market garden vegetables, uh, yeah. gardens for growing vegetables. I want to put aquaponics uh, systems in place because water catchment, big reservoirs, you know, we're running out of water at the moment. So we really need to start putting these systems. I have a river, it doesn't run all the time, you know, it depends on the rain. In the summer, it, this year we had it running really strong early year, yeah. but other years it does die down. So I really want to start utilizing this water, yeah. putting it back into the land, doing swales, putting a permaculture philosophy into place, with the aim that in 5, 10, 15 years time, the whole space, you'll just be able to walk on the land and feed yourself. Yeah. So the transformation that we've made in the last few weeks has been amazing. And I'm really grateful to all the volunteers who came and put their beautiful energy into these two weeks and yeah I can't thank you enough the, and I can't wait to actually see how the trees will respond this year and next year to the work we've done on them.